The key to success in working pH and pOH problems is having some understanding of logarithms. Let's talk about finding the hydrogen ion concentration and the hydroxide ion concentration first. Water dictates much of how acids and bases behave. The, the characteristics of water with its polar negative oxygen and its polar positive hydrogen can very, very much dictate how much an acid or a base will dissociate. And an example of one of the characteristics that water dictates is pH. Let's consider what we call a strong acid, hydrochloric acid. If we have a 0.12 molar hydrochloric acid solution, then we have the hydrochloric acid dissociating 100% in the presence of water, forming hydronium ions and chloride ions. Now we very often write the hydronium ion as hydrogen ion instead, but we'll worry about that later. If we have a 0.12 molar hydrochloric acid solution, we can expect to have a 0.12 molar hydronium ion solution and a 0.12 molar chloride ion solution. You will notice that we have no more hydrochloric acid in the undissociated form. And this is typical of a strong acid. The hydrogen ion concentration is the concentration of the acid solution. And that is true even for acids that have more than one proton, such as sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid reacts with water to produce a hydronium ion and a bisulfate ion, or a bisulfate radical, if you will. You see, this bisulfate radical is a weak acid, and its dissociation is very small, particularly when compared to the fact that the sulfuric acid dissociates 100% to give you that hydrogen ion and the bisulfate. Now let's see what the hydrogen ion concentration is for each of the following. Suppose we have a 0.3 molar hydrobromic acid solution. That is a strong acid. So what we have is 0.30 molar hydrogen ion concentration. Well, what about a 0.18 molar nitric acid? That is a strong acid also. So the concentration of the hydrogen ion then is also 0.18 molar. And oh, by the way, hydrogen ion in brackets like that means concentration of hydrogen ion. Well, what if we have a 0.5 molar hydro hydrofluoric acid solution? Don't jump to conclusions, folks. Think back. Hydrofluoric acid is a weak acid. Therefore, we don't know what the concentration of the hydrogen ion is. The incomplete dissociation of weak acids is something that will dictate their pH, but that is something that we will discuss at a later time. Now let's look at the hydroxide ion concentration for each of the following. If we have a 0.2 molar sodium hydroxide solution, and sodium hydroxide is a strong base, we find that it dissociates 100% therefore giving us a hydroxide ion concentration of 0.2 molar and a 0.012 molar calcium hydroxide unlike sulfuric acid is going to give us a 0.024 molar hydroxide ion well it might not be quite 0.024 but calcium hydroxide is a fairly strong base so for our purposes at this point we will deal with it like this if we have a 0.5 molar potassium hydroxide solution, that is also a strong base. And we will have a 0.5 molar hydroxide ion concentration. The incomplete dissociation of weak bases, such as ammonium hydroxide, will dictate their pH, just like the incomplete dissociation of weak bases, such as acetic acid, dictates their pH. But we're going to deal with that at a later time. Now let's talk about finding the pH and the pOH from these solutions. pH, by definition, is the negative log of the concentration of the hydrogen ion. Think of it like this. That little p means negative log of, and then H means hydrogen ion. So what's the pH of a 0.025 molar hydrochloric acid solution? Well, the pH is the negative log of the concentration of the hydrogen ion. So it's the negative log of 0.025 molar. 
So the pH, now you put in your 0.025, hit log, and change sign, and you get the pH is 1.6, pretty strongly acetic. What's the pH of a 0.0064 molar nitric acid solution? Now you figure it out. It won't take you but a second. What is the pH? I came out that the pH was 2.2 because the concentration of the hydrogen ion is the same as the concentration of the strong acid. So we take the negative log of 0 0.0064 and it comes out to be 2.2. Now let's talk about pOH. pOH is the negative log of the concentration of the hydroxide ion. What is the pOH of a 0 0.015 molar sodium hydroxide? Well that's a strong base. So what we need then is the negative log of the concentration of the hydroxide ion, and that is the negative log of 0 0.015 molar, and I got that the pOH was 1.8. Does that mean the solution is acid? No, it doesn't. That's pOH. That means it's pretty strongly basic. What's the pOH of a 0 0.013 molar barium hydroxide? Well, you're going to have to look at the hydroxide ion concentration and consider barium hydroxide as a strong base. Therefore, the concentration of the hydroxide ion, because there are two in each barium hydroxide, is 0.026 molar. So the pOH is 1.6. Now, converting pOH to pH. You have to remember that pH plus pOH is equal to 14. That will be explained in a later unit. What is the pH of a 0 0.015 molar sodium hydroxide solution? Well, my suggestion would be to find the pH first, pOH first. The pOH, the negative log of the concentration of the hydroxide ion then, is the negative log of 0 0.015 molar, turns out to be 1.8. Now, the pH plus the pOH is 14. So the pH plus 1.8 is 14. So the pH is 12.2. Now, that sounds more like what you're used to hearing for a solution that's pretty strongly basic, isn't it? Since the pH plus the pOH is 14, if the pH is less than 7, your solution is acid. If your pH is greater than 7, your solution is basic. And of course, a pH of 7 is neutral. pH and pOH of weak acids and bases, and how water dictates this, is presented in another unit. Brought to you courtesy of the Chemistry Professor, offering complete chemistry courses on DVD. Visit us at our website at www.chemistryprofessor.com.